So you're piling food waste into the top tray of your stackable worm bin system, whether that's the Worm Factory 360, the Verma Hut, the Worm Cafe, one of those bins. But the worms aren't moving up. Why is that happening? Well, we're going to cover that on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and I own the Urban Worm Company. So lots of these commercial plastic worm bin systems are using trays, and these trays have holes in the bottom which allow the worms to come and go as they please. The theory here is that you take, you start with one tray, and it's normally put on a base, and that base is going to have kind of a catch for the excess liquid called leachate that you can eventually drain out of the bottom. So you're going to start with one tray, and you're going to put your, your food waste, uh, paper waste, worms in there. As that gets finished, what you then do is put another tray on top of that with the idea that the worms are going to leave the first tray, go up into the second tray, and so forth and so on. You can add the third tray, you can add a fourth tray. Eventually what's going to happen, in theory, is that you're going to remove that bottom tray, uh, which should be just worm castings. Now, this works a little better in theory, I think, than it does in principle, and here's why. Worms like three things. They like moisture, they like microbes, and they like organic matter. A mature worm bin is definitely going to have a lot of organic matter and it's going to have a lot of microbes, or at least it should. The X factor though is the moisture. And here's the key part. All things being equal, worms are going to choose the parts of the worm bin that are the wettest. It's the moisture that they want. It's not so much the fresh food waste. If your stackable worm bin system is actively producing leachate, then the worms are never going to move up. They're going to be perfectly happy where they are, where they've got a lot of moisture they've got the microbes and they've got organic matter. And even if you're talking about a finished tray that looks like mostly castings, the worms are perfectly happy to stay in there because what are worm castings? It's organic matter. And yes, the worms will happily eat their own poop. So the bottom line that if your stackable worm bin is producing leachate, then I can just about guarantee that the worms are gonna be real stubborn about moving up into the trays above them. I designed the Urban Worm Bag without one of these drains on them because I believe that a well-managed worm bin should not be producing this leachate. And the whole point of any commercial worm bin is to be able to harvest castings without a whole lot of worms in them. For a stackable worm bin with multiple trays, this means removing that bottom tray, which should be mostly castings. Same for the Urban Worm Bag, which is a single compartment worm bin where you simply open up the bottom and remove the castings from the bottom. Again, it should not have a lot of worms in it. If it's too wet in that bottom tray or if it's too wet at the bottom of your Urban Worm Bag, then that means that your harvests are gonna have a lot of worms in them, which simply defeats the purpose of the bin in the first place. So if you're having this issue, here's what I would tell you to do. I would either feed less food waste or I would add more bedding with each feeding. What I recommend is two parts bedding to one part food waste. And this, this ratio goes by volume and not by weight. And what this is going to do is that, that, uh, that, that, that bedding or that paper waste, cardboard waste is going to absorb that excess moisture that is released by your food waste as it breaks down. That's really the source of leachate. This is not worm tea we're talking about. It's not worm pee. It's not even a worm product. It is simply the, uh, the, the goo that gets released uh, from your food waste as it breaks down. And you want an absorbent material in there to sort of suck all that stuff up and not allow for that leachate to work its way down to the bottom of your bin. Now guys, this moisture issue is one of six different mistakes that I see vermicomposters make all the time. And so what I did is I created a handy little guide where I talk about this mistake plus the five others, uh, and it's gonna help you steer clear of some vermicomposting landmines. It's a quick, easy read. I think it's a fun read, and I think you're gonna enjoy it and you're gonna benefit from it. So above my left shoulder, you'll see a link here. Go ahead and click that link. You're gonna be taken to a page. You can sign up for my email list and get that guide immediately. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you on the next episode of Coffee and Compost.